How's it going, YouTube? This is School Shortical TCG, and uh, today, March 3, 2018, marks the one year anniversary since the Nintendo Switch release. And I thought I'd sit down and just sort of uh, do a retrospective of the first year of the Switch's life and uh, give my thoughts on it and my predictions for the uh, near and far future of the system. So, um, if you clicked on this video, then obviously you know what a Nintendo Switch is. That's awesome. Nintendo, for the first time in 11 years, made a console that people knew exactly what it was just uh, as soon as they laid eyes upon it. So this is my Switch. I got this on launch night at Best Buy a year ago, and I've had a blast with it. Uh, my biggest problem, uh, my biggest worry about it from the get-go was its reliability and longevity. So um, just uh, to give a uh, summary of the Switch itself, this is the Switch. These two controllers on the left and right are not part of the Switch. Those are separate controllers that you can take off and use with whatever um, on the side, or you can put it back on the console. Um, I have a lot of Joy-Cons, but those are just two. The Switch itself is this middle part. That's the entirety of the console. Now, that should seem like fairly easy for most people to understand, right? Well, the reason that's such a novel thing for, not, for Nintendo is because of what came before it. Only the most dedicated of Nintendo fans know what this is. And by that I mean anyone who's been a Nintendo fan within the last few years. If you are even a casual gamer, or if you're into gaming on other consoles but not Nintendo, you may not know what this is. The majority of the public, if they see this, they might think it's a fancy schmancy tablet or something. Mine's a little dirty, but ignore that, because I've used it a lot. Um, no, this is a Wii U gamepad. This is not the Wii U. This is the controller for the Wii U. That confused so many people. A lot of people thought, okay, is this controller a uh, accessory for the Wii? Is this a little add-on that you need to play some more advanced Wii games in order to use? No, this is a controller for the successor to the Wii. Nintendo did an incredibly bad job of marketing the Wii U. So bad, so very, very bad. When all was said and done, the Wii U sold about 13 and a half million units worldwide. 13 and a half million. That's about half of what the GameCube sold, uh, which was the last major console to sort of see anything um, of, a, of a sort of failure from Nintendo. It wasn't a failure by any means, but it definitely lost that console race of that generation outside of the Dreamcast. Um, so when the Wii U failed miserably, people were sort of expecting Nintendo to just give up on gaming. Uh, I mean... This was the second biggest failure of all time, only after the Virtual Boy. The Virtual Boy. When you start comparing the Wii U to the Virtual Boy, you know you've done goofed Nintendo. But they came up with this ingenious idea. And honestly, when I first heard this, I thought, we'll just have to see how this goes. I have the live stream archived on my channel of my reaction to the Switch reveal trailer a year and a half ago, back in, I think, October 2016, it was a while ago, that they first revealed the Switch, and my first thought was, it's just another Wii U. The trailer didn't do the best job of showing it off, but it did show um, that the Switch worked as its own portable system, and then, if you wanted, you could find a dock and just set it into the dock like that, and the picture would show up on your TV. That is the Switch. I have these games all stacked up here. I'll just set them down. So, that first trailer was a little confusing, but since then, it's become easy enough to explain to someone. The Nintendo Switch is a console that plays video games, either in handheld mode or in docks mode. In handheld mode, the picture appears on the screen, and you can play it looking at it like a tablet. In docked mode, the picture goes straight to your TV with no extra setup required, and you can play it on your TV as if it was a PlayStation or an Xbox. That's a great idea.
that worked out really well. It worked out so well. You remember how much I said the Wii U sold in in, in its entire lifetime? Thirteen and a half million. By the end of 2017, less than 10 months after the Switch first hit store shelves, it sold 14.7 mil. That's over a million more by the end of its first calendar year. And as of today, it's been out for a full year. So we'll have to see how much it sold in its true year one. I wouldn't be surprised if it sold 17 or even 18 million units in its first year alone. That is easily a success. If, if it sells another 10 million, then it allows sell the GameCube, and it just keeps going up from there. I can see this overall selling 100 million or more. I could see it even outselling the Wii. Now, um, what made it so successful? Obviously, um, the, um, the biggest factor is just being able to take it on the go. If you have your big, uh, big hidden games, I think I've been putting that in backwards this whole time. No, no, that was right. Anyway, if you have your big hidden games uh, that you want to play, but you aren't at home that much, or if you're in the middle of something and you want to take it with you uh, real quick when you go on a trip, you could just take your Switch with you. It's easy enough. If you have your big first-party games like Zelda and Mario, or if you have even some third-party major games like uh, FIFA 18, for example, or if you have especially indie games that you want to just take with you wherever you want to go. Simple as that. That's a big selling point to a lot of people. For years, basically since the beginning of video game history, people have wanted to take video games on the go. At the beginning, you had stuff like the Game Boy, which... Uh, which was, you know, a dumbed-down versions, basically, of games that you could take with you. And since then, they've slowly been getting better at making games portable, and now we have a true hybrid system where the same game you take on the go is literally the exact same one that you play on your TV. It's just as simple as taking it out and putting it in. That's a huge factor to a lot of people. There's also the um, Nintendo making great first-party titles. I have some right here. The uh, biggest selling one is Super Mario Odyssey. I think last I saw this sold over 9 million units. The best selling game on the Wii U was Mario Kart 8. Sold only 8 mil. So again, within a month and a half, this outsold the best selling game on the Wii U. Obviously, Nintendo had some awesome uh, first party games to show. Uh, they had Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Such unique games like this that big third parties are publishing only on the Switch makes it even more of a reason for people to get a Switch to play those. We had ports of Wii U games like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which were on the Wii U, but now they're updated for the Switch. So if you didn't play it on the Wii U and you have a Switch now, you can get it for the Switch, and that's a great selling tactic. It sucks for this, those of us who have played it on the Wii U already having to pay it full price for the Switch again, but uh, you got to remember... There's less people who had a Wii U in its lifetime than have had a Switch in its first year, so there's a much bigger audience for the Switch. This right here is the reason that it sold so much to begin with. It sold almost 3 million units in its first month alone, and it's thanks to this one game right here. This game that we had been waiting for years for the Wii U, and Nintendo finally said, okay, we'll put it on the Wii U, but the same day, it'll be on the Switch. Same game. Little... Very few, very few differences between this and the Wii U version. But, you get a Switch, you get to play it with you on the go, wherever you go. Zelda outsold the Switch in its first month. Somehow, Zelda sold more copies on the Switch than the Switch itself sold. That's amazing. So, a very strong lineup at the beginning of the Switch's um, library helped it along. Continued support is also what helped. Something the Wii U lacked. When it launched, it had, what, New Super Mario Bros. U, I think. Then it got Super Mario 3D Land a, a year later. I didn't get my Wii U until 2014, two years after it came out. I didn't get it until Mario Kart 8 had come out and Super Smash Bros. was right, was right around the corner. And when I got it, those were basically the only two games that I played on it forever. Then Splatoon came out. That was 
in my opinion, the best game made for that system. It had a few other games spread out, but the long story short is there were not that many games worth buying a Wii U for. If, if you absolutely had to spend $300 to play your five games that caught your attention, then sure, the Wii U was there. The Switch has gotten major first-party games almost every single month since it released. Day one release, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You buy a Switch, throw in Legend of Zelda. You can play a great game right there. This will hold you over for months, weeks at the very least. It worked well. Right as that drought was going up, in April, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Uh, yes, it is a port of the Wii U game, but this comes with all the DLC, which a lot of people just didn't buy for the Wii U version. And again, the Switch audience, much bigger than the Wii U audience. So this introduced the game to a whole new group of people. May, ARMS. June, wait, was June, uh, I'm sorry, May didn't have anything. June, ARMS. July, Splatoon 2. Uh, September, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Um, November had ports like Skyrim and all sorts of other stuff. Of course, October had Super Mario Odyssey. And the support continued on. December had Xenoblade Chronicles 2. February, just last month, they ported Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2 to the Switch. Major games. Bayonetta 2 was exclusive to the Wii U. Now it's on the Switch. A whole new group of people can play it. That is something that I think is part of what made the Switch really sell well. A strong first year. Nintendo saying very clearly, okay, look at all these games that we're putting out. And guess what? We're keeping this up. No more Wii U era where you have to wait months on end without a new game. No more we have you required to use this to move around your, your view, your point of view in order to see stuff that you can't turn off. Star Fox Zero, anyone? Now it's just fine. We have this hybrid system that has a few gimmicks on it, but you can turn those off, and we're giving you all these great games, and we're giving them to you now. That is what sold this system. That is why this system did well and continues to do well, and why I believe it will end its lifetime as the best-selling home system Nintendo's ever made. The Game Boy is number one at 150. Don't think it'll be that. Sorry, the DS, not this. Uh, that is something to bring up, though. This is a hybrid. So I sincerely doubt Nintendo will make a 4DS or, you know, anything to succeed the 3DS. I think this is the successor to the 3DS. I think that's it. Um, I mean, obviously, they've already announced that Pokemon will be coming on this. And the, it, the day that Pokemon comes to the Switch is the day that the 3DS is officially dead. But any time before that, 3DS is alive and well. So, any market that there used to be for the 3DS, and that sold incredibly well. Over 70 million 3DSs have sold. Anyone who used to play 3DS, all those games, they're going to be on this, which will sell even more, and will help to keep this safe and healthy in the long term. Um, so... What concerns do I have? Well, as I said earlier, my main concern on this was the longevity. Not of the library, but of the console itself. Not of the support of the console from Nintendo. I mean, I was worried this wouldn't work after a year. But so far, so good. I play this several times a week, several hours a day when I do play it, and so far, so good. I don't have any problems with it. Uh, I, I know plenty of people are talking about, you know, warping issues or dead pixels or stuff like that, but I never had any of those issues. Um, I treated my console with care. I, uh, I don't really take it out on the go. That might be part of the reason why it's doing so well, but the fact is it's still working just fine, just as well now as it was day one. I, uh, it is a tablet when it comes down to it, and I am worried still that maybe not a year from now it'll die, but maybe five years from now, or ten years from now, or twenty years from now that it'll die. Um, that is one of my main concerns, is that it just will not last as long as cartridge-based consoles of, of ye olden days. Although this is cartridge-based, it does come with these little uh, cards here, that uh, carts that uh, you, you use instead of discs. I just don't know how long that'll last, but for now it's not a concern. Like, 
I do have another issue, and that's that it seems to be a growing trend that companies will only put part of the game on the cartridge and will require you to download the rest later. Um, my main concerns with that are in 20 years when the servers are down, then there won't be any way to play those games, even if you have the cartridge, which is bogus. And the second thing is I have a 200 gigabyte micro SD card in here, and it's already more than half full just because I have a full library of Switch games and anything that requires an extra download I put on there. Just the required extras of games that I already own in cartridge form, that's another main concern I have, is that that'll be a growing trend and it'll get to the point where more games than not do that. I don't think that'll be the case, but it is something to think about. Uh, Take Two is especially the the, the uh, bad guy here. They did it with WWE, NBA 2K18. Uh, they did it with uh, LA Noir. There's plenty of others. But with any luck, that won't be a problem for a long time. For uh, Plus, the Switch can uh, hold up to 2 terabytes of micro SD space. That hasn't been invented yet. I think the highest right now is 512. Um... Nonetheless, it is in the back of my mind that if I continue going after a full library and I download all the extra stuff necessary, that at some point maybe even two terabytes won't be enough. I guess we'll see in the long term. Another concern I have is that the year was extremely front-loaded. We had, like I said, a new first-party game practically every single month almost. We had great third-party support. I have no doubt that that'll stick around for as long as the Switch is around. It might it might get support as long as the Wii's gotten support. Spoiler alert, the Wii is still getting games. So third parties I don't think is going to be the issue. It'll be first parties. Um, there's a lot of stuff that released year one. We had a new Zelda game. We had a new Mario game. We had a spin-off Mario game. We had a Mario Kart game. We had Xenoblade. We got a new IP Arms. We got a sequel to a Wii U's new IP, Splatoon 2. We got so many ports from the Wii U. It's not even funny. Um, and I'm worried that after not that long from now, Nintendo will just run out of stuff to put out, and then it will go back to just a, a new game every few months, and thus make the Switch incredibly front-loaded. So that you get it early, you get all those great games, but once you're done with those great games, there's nothing. That's my main concern right now. Now, there are new games coming out. We know of Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze um, getting the uh, Funky Mode edition uh, on the Switch in May. We know of, of course, Metroid Prime 4 with a 30-second trailer. Nintendo won last E3. Awesome. We know the new Pokemon game coming out. There's still plenty of IPs that they can pull from. They can make a new Animal Crossing, which I know everyone's hoping for. They can make new... Um, uh, oh, there's Kirby coming out. There's Yoshi coming out. Um, there's all the stuff that they've announced. And, of course, the big one, the elephant in the room, Super Smash Brothers. When that comes to the Switch, this will sell like hotcakes. When Pokemon comes to the Switch, it'll sell like hotcakes. The support that it gets from those games alone is just going to be huge. And I'm glad that they haven't announced Super Smash Bros. yet, because that would be just another game to throw in the front. They need to spread the Switch library out if they want to keep this thing supported for seven years or more like they've publicly stated they want to. That means they have to have a plan so that in the year 2024 they're still making games for this with their successor maybe on the horizon, but so far out. You don't even care because this is still a thing and it's still putting out great games. They have to play the long game in order to do that. And I hope they do. So, um, overall, the Switch has had an incredible first year. It's going to have an incredible second year, I have no doubt. Nintendo wants to sell 30 million more by March next year. I totally think they can do that. That would bring them up to almost 50 million within two years. Easily one of the top selling consoles of all time. And that's only after two years. They still got so much longer after that to worry about. I think that they can do really well with this thing. I'm glad they made it. I'm glad to own one. I'm glad to say at long last, I'm happy that I own a Nintendo console once again. It's been a long time since I've been able to say that. Um... 
Just give me uh, a new Splatoon game at some point. Doesn't even need to be Splatoon 3. Give me a spin-off game with a Battle Royale mode instead, and I'll be happy. Uh, just keep up the support, Nintendo. Um, and if you're watching this and you're looking for suggestions, please make a new Zelda game sooner rather than later and use Breath of the Wild's engine. It's already perfect. This is a perfect game. You just need to make a brand new plot surrounding it, maybe some new mechanics. But keep the engine, keep the art style, throw it on there. Give me Majora's Mask for the Switch. Not literally. And I'll be happy. So that pretty much wraps up my uh, thoughts on the Switch. This was just a candid sit down and talk about it sort of video. Hope you all enjoy. Be sure to give me your thoughts on the Switch as well. And uh, yeah, that does it. Super happy to have this. Can't wait to see what happens next. Hi everyone, this is Skull. If you like the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. I also want to give a huge thanks to my Patreon pledgers for this month, whose names you can see on screen, along with some other videos of mine I think you might enjoy watching. That does it for now. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.